But before we go into any further and before we dive into this week's movie, I've got to introduce our very special guest, uh, Adam from the Below Freezing podcast and Rewind 2552 podcast. He's double duty. He's a very busy man, and we're happy to have him here. Adam, welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, such a such a treat to be here, and such a um, uh, a nice sort of uh, I mean, as you'll say later, uh, sort of an unsung gem to to talk about. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, very one of my unbranded. favorites. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, Adam, we like to think of this movie as a movie club. I think you've heard me mention that by now. And being a guest on this show means that you are officially in our clubhouse. You're not just in the club. You are a clubhouse member. It's a yes. big deal. What's the password? New England clam chowder. Is that the red or the white? I can never remember that. White? It's a big deal. It and I have a feeling... Deal. You'll be introduced into another club soon enough, but we'll get into that later <laughs> when it happens. Um, and as we do with all our guests, we have some questions we like to ask in order to get to know you just a little bit better and help us and our listeners get a feel for your tastes in movies and whatnot. So with that in mind, um, I think I'll just jump right into our clubhouse questions and I'll start with mine because I'm selfish. Um, and I just want to know if you could go back in time, you could clear your memory full on Doctor Strange memory wipe here. And you could experience a movie for the first time again. What would you pick? So I this is one that probably took up way too much of my valuable time <laughs> over the last <laughs> couple of days because I because I really thought about this and like I thought you know how cool would it be to to go back and see something like The Godfather or how great would right. it be to to be able to go back and see like Apocalypse Now or Two Thousand and One, but um and I I almost went with what is my, my favorite movie of all time, which is Pulp Fiction. But I, I didn't mm. uh, because I instead I went with uh, a movie I watched when I was in high school. So it was it was, I don't know, maybe six years past when the movie came out. But it was a movie that uh, whose whose storyline and plot blew my mind. And I realized that two of the people involved are sort of persona non grata now. But if I could go back and rewatch a movie for the first time, it would be The Usual Suspects. Nice. That's great. I like that a lot. You know, what's funny about that answer. I've never seen it. So I could actually live that experience. I feel like I've seen it because I know all the things that happen. I've heard all the references and it's been spoiled for me. Uh, I still feel like I'll enjoy it. But um, knowing what I do know about that movie, I think that's a phenomenal choice. Yeah, I I used to um, I used to with one with my uh, my history teacher when I was a freshman, we would go back and forth. We would give each other film quotes. And we would have until the end of the day to fix like to have, and this is pre smartphone. So we'd have to like, think about it. Mm. And one day he gave me, he gave me the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world. He didn't exist. And I didn't know what that was from. Right. And he was like, you haven't seen this. Cause this is, I'm, you know, trying to become a cinephile at the, yeah. at the ripe age of 15. And he was <laughs> like, you know, he was like, you need to see this movie. And so that weekend I, I rented it. My 15 year old mind like exploded at the end. And like, um, what? they can do this in movies. What's exactly. And, and there have been plenty of great movies that, with great endings and great and, and, and just epics that just to see at, at its initial release would have been something. But to go back and, and just relive how like jaw on the floor I was when I saw that movie would be would be quite the experience. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I like this question, because I just have a, a lot of moments like that in my life that. Uh, you know, like you said, we're John the floor moments. And I just think it's a really cool way to sort of, um, yeah, just peek behind the curtain a little bit and, and see what see what makes uh, Adam from the below freezing and rewind twenty five fifty two podcast tick. Um, yeah. Benjamin, did you I thought I, th- I think I cut you off a little bit ago. Oh, no, it's all good. I was going to say, like, I, I love this answer for a lot of reasons. Um, I'll save our listeners from having to listen to my favorite quote for like the 10th time on this pod, but (laughs) I love so much Benicio del Toro's delivery when he's like, give me the fucking keys, motherfucker. Like I love that so much. (laughs) It's just when I (laughs) fell in love with him, I was like, I don't care what this guy's in. Like I'm on board. Like this is so good. We need to do a, uh, a jump, a a jumping on the scene Rushmore. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that was like when Benicio like jumped into the, into the yeah. movie scene and like put himself on the map. We need to do that rush more eventually, but that's good not today. <laughs> I thought you, I thought you were going to suggest like a retire Ben's clips rush more. <laughs> it's like, once we say these, like stop playing these clips, <laughs> we've heard it so many times. Like, Hey, as the editor, I'm going to play what I want to listen to. You know, like, I love that clip. That would so. be a fun little bit to do. <laughs> fan, fan vote for what 
can Ben stop playing, please? Like <laughs> we've heard this clip. <laughs> One has to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'm curious. So like Adam, my, the first you, you had a, a pod previously called a thousand one by one. I'm curious if usual suspects is in there. I feel like it, it is. It is right. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Yeah. That's a, that's a great movie. That's one that the reveal is just like, holy shit. Okay, cool. Yeah. I like that. It was, yeah, that was awesome. And, um, and uh, yeah, don't get me wrong. I, uh, a podcast I, I very much wish was, uh, was still in existence. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously like some um, very unfortunate circumstances. And I did go back. I got to listen to a few of those in preparation for this. I really enjoyed your dark night episode. So it's a great one. Highly recommend it to people who want to check it out. But yeah, uh, my question uh, is about a desert Island. Uh, this is something I like, especially to, to ask people who really love film. Cause I really enjoy hearing what their answers are here, but essentially we're all familiar with the whole concept desert Island. You got provisions, but you also happen to have like an entertainment center. So you're able to like keep yourself entertained while you're there. And I'm always curious, what filmography would you take with you from either an actor or a director? Again, again, I, uh, I spent valuable office hour time, uh, yes. work, look, thinking about these. And so I don't know if I actually landed on one. I, I, I had okay. a few that I was working through. So, um, let's work through it. Let's do it. So the only the, the director, I, I mean, because I, I mean, I could say Fincher or I could say Tarantino, which mm-hmm. and those would be really easy answers for me. But, you know, a desert island's a long time and their filmographies don't run that deep. So exactly. I'm like, OK, so uh, for a director, I went with uh, I, I feel like this is just a cheap. But I went with Hitchcock because um, Ooh, I mean, there are just beautiful. so there are an obscene amount of, of movies that he did but also oh, yeah. an obscene amount of good movies that he did. So, mm-hmm. um, true. So that, so I was working through the Hitchcock one and then I was thinking about actors. I le- so I thought about Leo because he's in a lot of movies that I really enjoy. He, and he's worked with a lot of great directors. I get a little <laughs> Scorsese. I get a little Tarantino. Um, and I get some big blockbustery stuff. So it's like, well, Leo's a fun one, but then I, I was thinking about these two guys, these two Paul Thomas Anderson standards. And so I was Ooh. fighting back and forth between either John C. Riley or Philip mm. Seymour Hoffman, oh, because man. you get a bunch of PTA stuff with Philip Seymour Hoffman. You get um, some Coen brother stuff mm-hmm. uh, yeah. with John C. Riley. You get, you get stepbrothers. So I'm not just limited to like, <laughs> um, you know, like, like accolades and like award yeah. driven films. So you get some silly, dumb stuff too. You get days of thunder with John C. Riley. If you mm, want it. Sure. Um, who doesn't? <laughs> I, yeah, exactly. I mean, but I, 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 so I, but I think, I think at the end of the day, just to, just to be spicy, I think I would pick Philip Seymour Hoffman. Um, nice. Because, because he's, he's kind of incredible and he really mm-hmm. had such interesting phases of his career where, you know, he starts off doing like, you know, he's like, he's the douchebag. Sorry, Steve. Um, in <laughs> son of a woman. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and uh, and small roles in like uh, in the Big Lebowski, but then he you know, and then he gets to the fun character roles he builds, he builds, he builds, and all of a sudden now he's in Capote. You get Moneyball if you want Philip Seymour mm-hmm. Hoffman, right? Um, I don't know. Get, I just feel like you get a lot of variety with with PSH, including Along Came Polly, one of my favorite like yeah. side character roles of his ever. Just the whole <laughs> basketball scene, yelling Rain Man, and yeah. explaining what yeah. a shark is. Like God, I love this guy so much. <laughs> What happened to you? Hey, Ruben, I'm in a situation here. We have to leave now. Well, no, can we stay a couple more minutes? Dude, no. This is serious. I just sharted. I don't know what that means. I tried to fart and a little shit came out. I just sharted. All right, now let's go. And I think you get, like, honestly, also, I don't know, one of my favorite Mission Impossible movies. You get Mission Impossible 3, which I think doesn't get a lot of love, but that was a great Mission Impossible, and he was a great villain in there. So I love this selection. Um, We... Mm -hmm. Early on, uh, we did our first round was actually Spike Lee joints and I picked 25th hour. And I don't know if you've seen that, but oh, yeah. he's great yep. in that. Like, so this, yeah, this is a wonderful oh my God, selection. The, the Spike Lee tracking shot of him following oh. Anna Paquin oh, in the club yes. is just like stellar. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like, yeah, right when you say it, that's the first thing you think of is that whole club scene. It's like, oh my God, it's so good. So <laughs> that's great. Honestly, I think it like gunned to my head. He might be, in my opinion, just like one of my, fa- my favorite actor of all time. Like I love Philip Seymour Hoffman. There's so much great stuff. I, 
I know the the same. I went and watched. You know, m- months ago, I was saw Licorice Pizza in theaters, and I came home, and then I was like, I I want to watch them, and I I put on the Master, which Ooh, is a weird way oh, to end my night. Yeah. I was like, God, he's so good in that. <laughs> he really so is. He's incredible. He's great. Twister, try, like we can just go through his whole IMDb, but I think it's a, a yep. wonderful selection. That obviously one of the only unfortunate parts is like it's it's capped off. We got everything we're gonna yeah. get. That's why I didn't know where you're gonna go. You know, because with the Desert Island, you continue to get stuff from the people, but. It's yeah. hard to to go against Philip Seymour Hoffman. So excellent choice. I love it. Yeah. But I mean, shout out to Licorice Pizza. Hey, Cooper, if you're listening, like and subscribe. We love your dad. Yeah. Please come on the pod. And, uh, yeah, come on, come on the pod. <laughs> um, so this round uh, is our our third unsung gem round. And unsung gem is a, a, a term we coined for movies that you love personally, that you feel like those around you in your circles just like underappreciate or just simply haven't seen or heard of. And so we were curious. We're always curious with our guests. What is your unsung gem that just flies under the radar? Um, so I, I, I had, again, I was, I was working through two um, and both are uh, uh, there. They've been submitted into the criterion collection. So mm. I think, you know, film people know about them, but like mm-hmm. if I was to tell my family about these movies that there's no yeah. way they would have heard of them. I almost went with Minding the Gap, which was a documentary oh. from a few years ago mm-hmm. um, that uh, really I thought was really, really good. But um, I'm going to stick true to form. I'm going to I'm going to go with the first answer that I had. And uh, it's in a thousand and one by one. It's an episode that I pushed. It's a uh, it's from the UK. It's a Ken Loach film called I, Daniel Blake. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you've if you've seen it. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. it's this uh, it's about this guy, Daniel Blake, who's an older guy who um. The short version is that he, he, he's had like a heart attack or something. So he's unable to go back to work, but he's also, he has to apply for benefits. So he's in this weird boat where he has to apply for jobs to show that he's applying for work, but he mm. can't take them because he's, he's been declared unfit to work. Yeah. So he's mm. in this, vi- this vicious cycle where he, you know, he can't get benefits. He can't get what he needs. And then his, his paths cross with this single mother uh, of two girl, of two kids um, who's just moved by him and she's struggling. And it's, it, not much really happens. It's just sort of their, their day-to-day lives over a little bit while he's fighting to get these, these benefits. Mm-hmm. It's so, it's so subtle. The movie, it's not shot any, in any kind of, it's not shot like city of God. There's no flair. There's no nothing, but the performances are just kind of astounding. And the, the woman who plays the mother in this, and I, I don't have the name in front of me. Um, I mean, there, there's almost not a scene with her where I don't openly weep. Mm. And, um, it's just, it's, it's so heart wrenching and, uh, and it's, but it's, but it's, it's powerful in a good way. And it's one of those, it's a movie that actually enacted change. Oh, that's cool. Parliament met and actually fixed part of their healthcare system because wow. this movie was shown to them. So it's a movie that actually, you know, does what a lot of movies say they want to do and, yeah. and you know, create change. This one right. did. And, um, and I, I, you know, I, I, am a big proponent of physical media. I have a gross amount of movies and I, I will blind buy movies all the time. And sometimes <laughs> it'll just blow up in my face. Um, but this was one that was in the book, uh, that was in a thousand and one movies you must see before you die. And I was, it picked it up at one of the half price Barnes and Noble criterion sales and was, I, I don't use the word or the phrase blown away too often, but I was, I was blown away. It, it yeah. was, it's an emotional powerhouse and I, I i i just i i recommend this movie to anybody who wants to feel feelings that's, okay. a, that's great a great recommendation day. there yeah yeah, yeah that, i will be that, checking that out the way you describe that where with, with uh you know not much happens really reminds me of um a while back we did a trilogies round and all three of us to some extent ex- uh discovered the before trilogy for the first time so like before sunrise all, all those and that's kind of how I would describe those oh. movies. Like if you just want to see something beautiful and just kind of feel something and think about something, but like nothing really happens. Like if, so if it's if, if if I'm correct in that in that comparison, then I'll definitely check this movie out. Yeah, I, I mean, I think you're you're on point where there's no like there's no big problem to solve. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, right. Yeah, he has his issue to deal with, but it's not like. You know, it's not Mission Impossible three. You know, it's um, <laughs> it's a, just this, it's just a guy trying to go about his life and and he's got a past and and this mother has a past and they have their stories, but we don't. It's just like, how do we get through our day to day lives, it, you know, the way that they are? And it's it's just it's just a beautiful film. That's cool. Mm-hmm. 
for anyone interested as of right now when we're recording this it's on hulu so you can watch it there so oh, oh that's sweet. great to hear it's that's worth, amazing worth checking <laughs> that's out cool. um but yeah as someone who's also a frequent buyer blind buyer at the criterion like <laughs> that's like the only time i go to barnes and noble twice like twice a year when they have their criterion <laughs> sales like cool let's like load up let's see what we got but uh i also th- this sounds wonderful i can't speak to it because i haven't seen it but i would love to reinforce minding the gap to anybody who hasn't seen it mm-hmm. because that is just like that's one for me where i just really went in completely blind and i think even if you like watch the trailer by the end of it you still don't get what you thought you were going to get and it is mm-hmm. just like there's a few there's a handful of movies i think that i've texted these guys about like immediately after watching i was like go watch this please or you know whatever and i feel like this was one of them where it's like just like i just want you to watch even without like the trailer or anything like that's just one of the best i've seen i'm i'm very curious to see what that director does next but yeah both of those i think are great selections yeah i think so minding the gap definitely stuck out uh when adam mentioned it and I think it's because of your recommendation, Ben. I was like, wait, have I seen this? I certainly haven't, but that must be it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So another movie on the list. Add it, add it to the queue. Just always watching mm-hmm. movies. <laughs> <laughs> you are officially a clubhouse member. You made We're it. We're happy yes. to have you. Those are great answers. And I love all those. I love all those questions. And I really like the unsung gem because it just it keeps it just keeps adding movies to the list. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, if. If we end up adding that into our uh, our podcast canon, that movie, we'll let you know and we'll have you back on for sure. Oh, please do. Yes. <laughs> Maybe the next unsung gem, unsung gem round. We might we might get to it. It'd be fun. 